This historical evidence is overwhelming that the founding fathers intended impeachment to be used to deal with the commission of indictable crimes and the abuse of power, corruption, and injury to the nation caused by public officials, among others. Indictable. I N D. <laughs> I've been my zealous from the Midas Touch Network. You heard Marjorie Taylor Greene say the word indictable. I think she means indict, but who even knows what these MAGA Republicans are talking about. As Democrats and rational Republicans in the Senate have come together to do a bipartisan border deal, Donald Trump has ordered the MAGA Republicans in the House of Representatives like Marjorie Taylor Greene and MAGA Mike Johnson and others to try to kill the toughest border deal that addresses everything because Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans want to run their campaigns on whining about the border instead of coming up with solutions. Well, there are reasonable and rational Republicans, though, on this issue who are speaking out about this behavior by these MAGA Republicans and by Donald Trump, who's ordered these MAGA Republicans to behave this way. The first thing I want to show you, though, right now is Ken Buck. Ken Buck is a Republican, right-wing conservative. Ken Buck is no longer going to be running for re-election. And one of the things that Ken Buck said is, look, I am not going to go along with this uh, impeachment sham of Alejandro Mayorkas, the Secretary of Homeland Security, because MAGA Republicans want to do that versus actually solve the problem. I'm not voting for any impeachment of a cabinet officer. There's no impeachable offense here. So the MAGA Republican stunt number one of trying to focus on impeaching Mayorkas instead of actually addressing the border seems to have backfired based on the very slim majority that MAGA Republicans have in the House of Representatives. Let me play this clip of Ken Buck. Play this clip. You were previously undecided. What led you to decide you will vote no? Well, uh, this is not a high crime or misdemeanor. It's not an impeachable offense. This is a policy difference. Um, let me, from the outset, say there is a crisis on the border. Uh, the, the law needs to be enforced. Um, but uh, if we start going down this path of impeachment, with a uh, cabinet official, uh, we are opening a door as Republicans that we don't want to open. The next president, who is a Republican, will face the same scrutiny from Democrats. It's wrong, and, and we should not set this precedent. Next, let me show you this clip right here of Republican Congress member Dan Crenshaw from uh, earlier in the day. And here, Representative Crenshaw rips his Republican colleagues who are trying to sabotage the immigration and Ukraine deal when that's what they asked for Democrats to come to the table to do because the MAGA Republicans didn't want to fund Ukraine and Democrats and Republicans in the Senate who were not MAGA came up with a tough border bill and now Trump has told them that you should not do this deal. MAGA Republicans kill the deal. I want to run on whining about this issue. This is Republican Dan Crenshaw. Play this clip. The height of stupidity is having a strong opinion on something you know nothing about. I'm, I'm extremely disappointed in the very strange maneuvering by many on the right to, to, to torpedo uh, a potential border reform bill. If we have a bill that on net significantly decreases illegal immigration and we sabotage that, that is, that is inconsistent with what we told our voters we would do. People will make up whatever reasons they, they want to. There's a number of them, I'm sure. But it would be a, a pretty unacceptable dereliction of, of your duty. Let me show you this other clip right here. This is uh, Senate Republicans James Lankford and Bill Cassidy. We'll show you what they have to say about this. Play the clip. The former president calls this a betrayal. Is that a, what do you think of that characterization? It's, it's certainly not a betrayal, actually. We've got to be able to deal with issues in law. That's how we actually deal with things in America. Does he have access to the bill? Doesn't seem that way. It hasn't been released. How does he know it's a betrayal if he hasn't read it? I mean, don't be ignorant. Read the bill. 
Here's Republican Senator Kevin Kramer pushing back on Donald Trump and other MAGA Republicans for trying to scuttle the immigration Ukraine deal. Play this clip. The former president calls this a betrayal. Is that a, what do you think of that characterization? It's, it's certainly not a betrayal, actually. We've got to be able to deal with issues in law. That's how we actually deal with things in America. Does he have access to the bill? Doesn't seem that way. It hasn't been released. How does he know it's a betrayal if he hasn't read it? I mean, don't be ignorant. Read the bill. Here you have uh, Senator McConnell is asked about uh, how voters are going to look at Republicans who are refusing to do a border deal when that's what they said that they wanted to do. So Democrats said, okay, we'll do it. And then Republicans said, no, 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 we don't want to do it. We don't want to do it. And Mitch McConnell's like, I'm not going to speak to anything about elections or presidential campaigns. Here, play this clip. How do you think Republican voter, how do you think voters would look at Republicans if the GOP were to kill a bipartisan deal that you cut with the White House because of Donald Trump's opposition? Well, I think I'm going to continue not to comment on the presidential campaign. Um, obviously, this is a incredibly challenging uh, political discussion we've been having. I still favor trying to make law when you can. And I do think that what Senator Langford and his team are going to produce is an improvement over current law. You're asking me a question I can't answer right now. I showed you Marjorie Taylor Greene at the outset. Here is Lauren Boebert talking about the types of things that she wants, like uh, electric fences to kill people crossing the border, alligators to uh, eat people, sharpened spikes to maim people. I mean, these people know there's no depths to their depravity. It just keeps on going. Play this clip. Uh, I, I do believe that Robert Garcia uh, did present to the nation our newest border bill uh, with gators and an electric <laughs> fence and spikes uh, and, and missiles. Uh, don't take any more taxes, I'm, but I'm I will cool co-sponsor that legislation. I'm happy to. Here's uh, the statements by Donald Trump, and he's show you video clips of this as well. Donald Trump says, I don't need big, complex, Democrat-oriented border bill, which will make Republicans look bad. Well, I just showed you before, other than Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert, I showed you a bunch of right-wing conservative people saying, what are you, what are you talking about? We, we want this. This is a bill that we, we asked for this. Democrats are giving us what we want. We're, we're reaching a deal here. Today's episode is brought to you by 8sleep, the high-tech solution to your age-old sleeping issues. 8sleep's pod cover slips right over your mattress, bringing heating and cooling tech that keeps you comfortable and sleeping deeper for a better, more restful night. There's nothing worse than tossing, turning, sweating, or shivering in the night because you're not sleeping at the perfect temperature. This is why I love my 8sleep, which has greatly improved my quality of sleep and in turn improved my quality of life. Sleep science shows that in order to sleep at our best, our body temperature needs to drop in the early and middle part of sleep and rise in the morning. The pod cover will improve your sleep by automatically adjusting your bed's temperature based on your individual needs. The cover can be added to any bed like a fitted sheet and allows you and your partner to cool or warm your side of the bed as low as 55 degrees and up to 110 degrees. In addition to keeping you at the perfect temperature all night, the pod also tracks your sleep and health metrics. On average, pod users see their sleep quality improve by 32% after just a month on the pod. There's no better way to improve your day-to-day -day life than better sleep. And the easiest way to do that is with 8 Sleeps Pod 3. So start the new year right and invest in the rest you deserve with 8 Sleep Pod Cover. Go to 8sleep.com slash Midas and get $200 off plus free shipping on the pod cover by 8 Sleep. That's 8sleep.com slash Midas. 
E-I-G-H-T-S-L-E-E-P.com slash M-E-I-D-A-S and get $200 off. Folks, this was a major game changer for me, and I'm so grateful for my eight sleep, and I know you will be as well. So Donald Trump's other post is, he goes, a border bill is not necessary to stop the millions of people, many from jails and mental institutions. By the way, like when you go over the stats to... You know, I, I always like to say these MAGA Republicans live in some fan fiction of what it was like when Donald Trump was in office. For example, there were over 1.3 million border crossings during the last year of the Trump administration pre-COVID. So that's what happened uh, under the Trump administration. Um, how about the fact that um, it's factually incorrect for Donald Trump to claim he had the most secure border in history. In 2019, there was more illegal immigration than during any one of Obama's eight years in office. And, you know, that, that, that stat right there is from a DeSantis supporter, Peter Henling. Um, just, just note that, right, which is that in 2019 under Trump, there was more illegal immigration than any one year of Obama's eight years uh, in office. Here's Republican Senator Mitt Romney talking about Donald Trump and what he's doing to the bipartisan border deal. Play this clip. Oh, I, I, think, I think the border is a very important issue for uh, Donald Trump. Uh, and the fact that he would communicate to uh, Republican senators and Congress people that he doesn't want us to solve the border problem because he wants to blame uh, Biden for it is uh, is really appalling. But the, but the reality is that, that uh, we have a crisis at the border. The American people are suffering as a result of uh, what's happening at the border. Uh, and someone running for president ought to try and get the, uh, you know, the problem solved as opposed to saying, hey, save that problem. Don't solve it. Uh, let me take credit for solving it later. Another clip here of James Langford. Notice how the Fox host says, why would you do this deal? It's going to help Biden. Here, play this clip. Liz Cheney, play the clip. ...that are not being enforced. So why give him this in an election year, the cover of this deal that, you know, uh, uh, critics say is still going to let a lot of people in, but he gets to take a victory lap that he's gotten something done. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's definitely not going to let a bunch of people in. It's focused on actually turning people around on it. It is interesting. Republicans four months ago would not give funding for Ukraine, for Israel, and for our southern border because we demanded changes in policy. So we actually locked arms together and said, we're not going to give you money for this. We want a change in law. And now it's interesting a few months later when we're finally getting to the end, they're like, oh, just kidding. I actually don't want a change in law because it's a presidential election year. We all have an oath to the Constitution and we have a commitment to say we're going to do whatever we can to be able to secure the border. Just as a quick, for instance, the last four months, we've had 50 people cross our border on the terror watch list, 50. We've had tens of thousands of people that were declared by this administration a national security risk that came across our border and were released. It is our constitutional obligation to be able to secure our country as fast as we can secure our country. This puts in mandatory pieces that haven't been there in the past to make this administration actually enforce the law. I would tell you, that I, don't, I don't know of anyone that believes that if President Trump was elected, well, he was president right now, this border would not have this problem. So the thought that somehow President Biden can suddenly be the pro-national uh, security president in the final months of this is... Over here, this is MAGA Mike Johnson, who goes on Fox, and Laura Ingraham tells MAGA Mike, I just spoke with Donald. He says, you're not going to do this deal, are you? She doesn't say Donald, actually. She says, I spoke to the president. She calls Donald Trump the president. I spoke to the president. What are you going to do? And then MAGA Mike's like, I spoke to the president, too. Play this clip. The, the president actually uh, just got off the phone with me right before the show, and he said he has spoken to you about this deal and that he is against it, and he urged you to be against this deal. He was extremely, President Trump was extremely adamant about that. Um, your reaction to that, given the fact that, look, he already, he knows how to do this enforcement stuff. You don't need some new bill coming out of the, uh, the Senate to get the border enforced. Yeah, President Trump is not wrong. He and I have been talking about this um, uh, pretty frequently. I talked to him uh, night before last about the same subject. We don't have the text of whatever the Senate has cooked up yet. And, and so we have to reserve judgment, I think, to see what comes out of it. By the way, James Comer, MAGA Republican James Comer, who chairs the House Oversight Committee, sending out messages like this. 
He sent this one to Eric Swalwell. Eric, we have a major problem. Our January fundraising has hit a brick wall. Russia gift. It's from James Comer to Eric Swall. I know it's going out to anybody who's on James Comer's list, but I like how Jared Moskowitz goes. I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation. Like Comer is probably just raising money to help Donald Trump's legal fees. I hear Alina Haba is a very expensive lawyer. Let's just do some contrast here. Let me show you this clip right here of Marjorie Taylor Greene yelling at Dan Goldman and saying, we don't care what we're going to do. We're impeaching Mayorkas, even though we know with Ken Buck, that's pretty much derailed at this point. Here's Marjorie Taylor Greene playing the clip, Miss Indictable. <laughs> Play the clip. This is not a policy debate. This is proof you can't lie about the numbers, no matter how much time you keep giving to Representative Goldman, he's not going to be able to spin it and change it for all of you. The facts are the facts. Secretary Mayorkas is breaking the law. We are going to impeach Secretary Mayorkas today on this committee. We don't care how long you go on. You can keep taking your five minutes and yielding back and forth and going to Goldman. Keep going. We're going to impeach him because he has broken the law. He has violated his oath of office. He is breaking federal immigration law. Americans are dying. And here's Democratic Congress member Dan Goldman. Play the clip. When the secretary and the administration has tried to use their limited authority to change policy, to limit the number of people coming to the border, to streamline the process, to make it go through ports of entry, Republicans filed lawsuits to stop the administration from doing it. So again, the hypocrisy of you sitting here accusing Secretary Mayorkas of failing to enforce the law when you are going to court to prevent him from time, enforcing the law time. I've used my time on this. is hypocrisy at its height. You have created this situation, and now you want to have the second impeachment of a cabinet secretary ever. You let him do his job. You work with the Senate, your colleagues in the Senate, on the legislation needed, and then let's figure out how to address the border. Gentlemen's time is expired. And here's Democratic Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries. Play the clip. This week, we continue to see performative politics and political stunts from our Republican colleagues. There are a whole host of issues that we could be working on together. The economy, affordable housing, public safety, national security, the challenges at the border. Extreme MAGA Republicans have chosen to spend the week focused on Secretary Mayorkas and Taylor Swift. That's their agenda. It's performative politics. And folks, that's why I encourage you to share these videos with people that you know and leave in the comments if you do share them. Because what I want to do with these videos is just say, let's just take a look at what people are saying. I try to keep my editorializing to a minimum and keep my opinions. You know where I stand. I think there should be a bipartisan border deal. And I think Democrats are trying to do it. And I think that Donald Trump is saying, don't do it because it'll hurt my campaigning because Trump thinks that whining about it's going to be helpful to him. I, I don't think that's, you know, I actually think that if there was a strong border bill, it would be helpful to all Americans and they would run on getting things done. So I don't think Americans like whiners. I think that independents and mainstream Republicans, not MAGA, look at Donald Trump as like a, as weak, as like a whiny baby who like goes around and, well, this happened, well, 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 well. Like that's how I look at it. But I don't lead with that. Here's what they're saying. Here's what Republicans are saying. Here's what these people are saying. Here's what they're saying. Make your own opinion, but let's lead with the video clips of what people have said over the past 24, 48 hours. Um and make and make your decision that way. So that's why I share these videos. Let people know this is what's up. This is what's going on. It's not a both sides thing, right? 
There's rational, reasonable people who want to make a deal. And then there's MAGA that just wants to destroy because Trump wants to whine about things. There you have it. I'm Ben Mycel. It's the Midas Touch Network. Let's hit 3 million subscribers. Check us out at patreon.com slash Midas Touch. Have a good one. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.